If you present a lot of Teams demos, then you'll probably be familiar with this problem. You want to do a demo and you want to show off some of the new features, but you haven't got enough people who are going to be available to join you for the demo. Now, that works some of the time. You can get everybody's availability, but what if they can't join or what if they forget? Now, that has happened to me before, and I want to make sure that it never happens again. And I've tried a few different ways to try and make sure that I've got a good demo partner and make it virtual. And I've I've struggled without trying to put a lot of effort into it. Now, I did this for some of our previous videos and people said, how can I do that? So I thought it'd be really useful to show you how. And better than that, I've made it really easy. So it automatically sets itself up for you in advance. So what, what our scenario is, let's say you want to do a demo of something like Together Mode. You want to get five people there ready and waiting so you can join the meeting, you can show off the functionality. I don't mean sort of the core stuff like, oh, let's show that a meeting works or I can call somebody because let's face it, you know, people can call each other with WhatsApp, FaceTime. You're not going to impress anybody by proving Teams actually works. So if we're doing a Teams demo for meetings, you want to show off some of the cooler scenarios where it's not about showing that voice works either way, but it is about showing things like together mode, showing custom scenes that you've made, showing that you can page between different views and so on uh, to make sure that people really understand Teams is, is one of the best platforms out there. Now, I thought that this kind of view is the, the kind of thing that we want. So you might have seen this in some of our other videos where I have brought in, and this was the NDI video, I brought in these guest attendees into my meeting so I can show them off. Uh, I think I did this in my Android demo as well. And I've got a whole bunch of these around, right? I've got uh, this one here and I filmed these using a stop motion camera. So that the first part of this is getting some content. Now, I know that you probably don't want to go and spend your evenings and weekends doing what I did there just behind me here, uh, filming them with your camera but it's actually quite easy. You can get a stop motion studio app. You can install that on a phone and with a bit of lighting and a camera on a little tripod, then it's quite easy. You know, all you need is something a bit like this, a little camera stand or selfie stand. Position that in the right place so it's still and pop the camera on top of it, launch the app. And then with something like Lego as an example, or Playmobil or one of these other types of uh, toy. <laughs> it does seem silly saying toy. Uh, then, because it's Lego, it's like blocks. You can move it around, but it won't get too out of position. If you need to do something like getting it, lifting up a cup of coffee and then returning it back to the same position at the end, then, well, it's Lego, so you know where it was stood and it's not going to look bad. So you can have something that goes round in a loop that is a couple of seconds long. Uh, doesn't take you a long time to make. You might need 30 frames or something like that. So you take 30 pictures using the app uh, and then you save it as an mp4 video so i've done that because i knew you know, who would want to spend their time doing this so if you look here then i've got a whole bunch of these so i'll just move that up so you can see that here i've got a whole bunch of these videos and you can download them so if i switch over so you can see my screen then have a look on Practical 365 website. You'll need this for the full guide on how to set this up because I don't expect you to remember every single step in the video. Uh, but what we need is a few different core pieces to get this up and running. Now I've got those videos, uh, so I've stored them here uh, inside GitHub. So copies of all of these videos that you saw, so you can download, use them as you wish. Uh, I recorded them all, uh, so they haven't been taken from anywhere else but you also need a few bits that go with this so teams obviously uh, and obs uh, to actually make a virtual webcam now obs is, is really cool so obs is what i'm using to record this this video right now uh, you can use it for streaming and stuff like that but it's also got within it it's got uh, something called a virtual camera so if i go onto one of these clients and you'll, you'll see why i've got a few up in a minute then obs studio has the ability for us to uh, use a virtual webcam. And inside the app itself, if I, minim if I maximize that, then this virtual webcam is taking that video file and then it's pushing that so Teams can select that as a webcam. 
So there is OBS virtual camera. Now, setting this up can take a little bit of time because if you install OBS by hand, you, you, you'll create a scene. And inside the scenes, you'll add a media source, which is like a, a video file here, which is set to loop. And that's downloaded to somewhere on the machine and it just goes round and round and round. Now, I've also, I've also decided what I want is to be able to fire up my machines and they're ready to go. I don't want to have to launch OBS, press the start virtual webcam button over and over again. Uh, I want to be able to be ready to join my meeting on demand. So I'll join a couple of these uh, to our meeting. So this is, this is actually the one behind me uh, on the screen there. So if I press that, then that's going to go across and oh, there we go. There's our first participant in the meeting and you can see that yeah, on the screen there. I'm going to join a few more people to this. Uh, as well. And uh, before I join the rest of them, I'm going to show you how to, to set one of these up. So on the Practical 365 website, as I said, scroll down to this GitHub link here. And inside this, and there's a guide on how to do this step by step as well, then you'll see that there's a PowerShell script. Now PowerShell scripts, uh, if you are not a techie and you're more into doing all the demos uh, for your users, for, for potential customers, then this isn't the, the intention of the script is to make it as easy as possible. So you can download this, uh, or I'm, as I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this from the page. Always recommend reading it through, get somebody that, that knows PowerShell to have a look and see if they're happy with it. Uh, and then on a new virtual machine, and I can do this in Azure. I can go into the Azure portal. I can either use uh, credits on an MSDN subscription, or sign up for a trial, then create a new Windows virtual machine, connect to it via remote desktop. Once I've done that, I can open up PowerShell on my brand new machine and I'll run this as administrator. And because this is a throwaway VM, I'm happy to do this. Um, you don't always want to be an administrator on the machine. And I'll go to the downloads folder and I will create a file for my script. So I'll call this Teams Virtual Users. Of course, you can download this. Um, sometimes the execution policies, it's called, won't allow you to download something and run it. So I usually create a new file and copy and paste it in. Now I've done that, then I should be ready to run it. So, so I'll run Teams Virtual Users. And what this is going to do now is set up the bits that I need. So it's going to go through and it's going to install something called Chocolatey. And Chocolatey um, isn't um, an app that you'll use, but what it is, is a automatic application installer. So what I want it to do for me is install OBS for me. So I don't have to go to the website, find it and download it. I also want it to install Teams for me as well. So I don't have to go to the website and download it. Makes my life easier. And all the other bits that make this work so the bits in that GitHub uh, site here, all these files, that it's going to download the bits I need. So I've, for your and my benefit and ease, I've set up those scenes that you saw where it's got a video file and so on in OBS already. And I've also got all of the MP4 files. So it's going to download those bits. It's going to extract that zip file into the right place. And then it's going to ask me, which of these characters I want to use. So I think I'll probably pick, I'll pick Rachel for this, uh, for this one as I go through. Uh, and then it's going to set this up so that OBS launches at start. So every time I start up one of my VMs in Azure or wherever they're located, um, it's going to automatically uh, start OBS in that web camera mode. Uh, Teams will launch as well after I've launched it the first time. Uh, and it will also give me the opportunity to automatically log the virtual machine in. So if I start the VM up, I go make a coffee, when I come back to it, it's ready to go. I log into it and OBS is running, it's got the virtual webcam up, Teams is running, it's started up. And all I need to do then is look in my calendar and find that demo meeting that I'm going to join. So while that goes through, so that's downloading all of the various bits, uh, I'll go into one of my clients here and let's carry on joining these. So what I'm doing when I'm joining the meeting from the calendar um, is I'm making sure that the webcam's on, should remember this each time afterwards, and I'm not using audio. So remember, it's not going to 
theme music into our meeting. You could do if you're trying out music mode uh, when that arrives. Uh, but for, for what we want this to do, we want it to be there to support our demo so we can try out features in front of people and they can see moving people as we do the demo. And by using something like this, or if you've got a Harry Potter set or you've got custom Lego figures, or I think Playmobiles are a good one, Exchange fans will probably know from some of those hybrid uh, presentations that Ignite in days gone by, Playmobil is, is you know something that you can use to build some characters out. Um, then build, uh, make some videos with those as well uh, if you want to jazz things up a bit. Um, it's It was coincidence that I used friends. It wasn't that I didn't have any to bring to my meeting. So I'll join this. Uh, I'll join Joey um, into my meeting as well. Uh, and Chandler is there. I did enjoy making these. I really did. Uh, I, I want to make some more. Uh, when I film these, though, just to sort of give it, like, sort of, you know, it's supposed to be in a cafe, I changed the lighting around a bit. So as I was filming, I had the light there, the, uh, the, this one, um, it's just behind me. I don't worry about where it is. Uh, but I had the light, moved it around a little bit uh, just as I was filming. So it looks like you know, it's cars passing by and you can see it's blocking the light ever so slightly as we go through. So it's it's intentional, you know, the way that we've, we've put this together to make it uh, so that it, it looks kind of real if we're, we're in a meeting. It doesn't look so composed. And because it's going around in a loop, then, you know, just lifting up a coffee and putting it down again. You get a little bit, you know, a little bit bland and people might not notice it happening. So going to pause for a second while that carries on downloading because uh, it's going to download each of these one by one and then resume in just one moment. So that's going to take about five minutes. Uh, that's how much time has passed now to finish the download. And then I'm going to be prompted to pick uh, who I want this to be. So I'm going to pick Rachel from the list here and hit enter. And if I want this to, as I said, log in automatically, uh, then I can enter the password here. It will save it to the registry. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to skip that step. Now, what will happen is on login, it's going to automatically launch OBS Studio. Um, so we can do that by signing out and signing back in again. Uh, this will be in the, the Windows startup. Uh, I'm going to hit enter on this and just launch this manually though. Uh, so it comes up onto the screen for us here. Now, one of the settings I've got in here is to launch it minimized. So it's not there in the way and I've disabled the preview for this as well. Uh, but if I enable this preview briefly, then you'll see what it's going to be doing. But we don't have to have that just cycling there in the background. It's going to launch It's going to, with the virtual camera enabled automatically. And it's just going to be going through these. If you want to, after you've set it up, change these, then you can literally open up OBS from there and switch to the one you want, switch back. Now that's up and running, though, in the background, then I can open up Teams and I can join this one to the meeting as well. So I can close that window too, and we'll give Teams a start. So come on, Teams. Now, the thing about using virtual machines is they can be a little slow. Now, this is going through its signing process. Um, I've got I've added a work account to each of my VMs uh, from the Microsoft demo environment because that's where I'll do most of my demos. And I'm in here as Alex Wilbur, and I've got a meeting for him to join that he was invited to as well. Uh, let's have a look Friday and scroll down to the evening. That's when we are, Friday evening when we recorded this. And I'll press join. And that should slowly, if you do Teams demos, you will remember those dialogues, I'm sure. That will slowly bring us to the Teams meeting join page. Now, this doesn't need to be a high power machine, I must say. All right, switch the camera on, and there we go. Press join, and that should be in our meeting. All right, so if I go over to my Teams client, so this is the one that I'm going to use for my actual demo, then now I've got my I've got my folks in there. Brilliant. So on the screen there, I could go and change some of the settings, if we like, on the MTR, if we want to demo the different displays. So on here, I've got different views. So I can do things like large gallery, switch to that. Over on this MTR device, 
I do like large scanner review, I really do. Uh, or switch into together mode, for example, on something like an MTR in a meeting. Look at that, it's popping all of them in. Uh, and on the screen here, uh, I can do the same thing here. So uh, you can do things like test out background effects, background blur for each of those meeting participants. Uh, and then in the meeting options, then we've got the ability to switch on things like together mode as well in here. Uh, so these will show up, uh, allow us to see what we want to see, change my scene to a, one that's more appropriate as well so really sort of cool stuff here so let's go for that view and have them all sitting next to each other so this is just one of those techniques that you can use to improve the way that you present these teams meetings because you know let's face it uh, after a year of meetings showing people yet another meeting isn't going to be massively impressive uh, so you need to have something to try and Jazz it up a little bit. And there's other things that you can do when you're demoing Teams that you probably do do already, like showing off building applications in Teams, showing off channel conversations, bringing in tabs, all of the other stuff in Teams that's absolutely amazing. But if it's meetings and you're trying to show off some new, cool, specific features that have, have launched, then this is one of those things that you can leverage uh, in your toolkit and build out a few as your virtual machines, fire them up just prior to your demo, and join them to the meeting after running this script that's going to install all of those relevant bits for you. Then when you're finished, either keep them switched off or throw them away and, and start again next time you need to do a demo. And of course, if you make any cool stop motion videos and you want to share them, just uh, go to our article on the site or put a comment onto the video. Uh, link is up. I uh, would love to share those with other people as well. Thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure.